Assalamu alaikum, dear students. Hope you are doing well. Today, I am going to conduct a class for the student of class 9-10, Biology, Chapter 4, Bioenergetics. And today's topic is about photosynthesis. And I will discuss about light independent phase of photosynthesis. So, today you will be able to understand what is light independent phase, what is Kelvin cycle and its details, what is C4 cycle and what is CAM. Before starting to this class, we have to revise the previous class, where we have discussed about first stage of photosynthesis. So, what is photosynthesis? Photosynthesis is a chemical process in which light energy is converted into chemical energy. The equation is carbon dioxide plus water with the help of light energy and chlorophyll makes sugar as the form of glucose and release oxygen. Leaves of the plants are chloroplast filled with chlorophyll which captures the energy from the sunlight and begins the reaction. Photosynthesis has two main phases, one is light reaction and another is dark reaction or the light independent reaction. In light reaction, it triggers light and water, ATP and NATPH molecules are formed to utilize in the second cycle and oxygen is released as a byproduct through stomata. So it was the previous lesson. Now today's topic, light independent phase. No light is directly required in this phase, but this phase can be carried out in the presence of light. In this phase, carbohydrates are produced by the production of carbon dioxide, reduction of carbon dioxide with the help of ATP and reduced NADPH, produced in the light dependent phase. So, the main theme of light independent phase is the reduction of carbon dioxide. And mm -hmm. scientists have seen that many plants do it in different pathways. The pathways of carbon dioxide reduction has been found in three types. That is, one is Calvin cycle or 3C cycle, another is Hatch and Slack cycle or C4 cycle, and third one is the Crescelation Acid Metabolism or in short CAM or CAM cycle. So, we will learn first about the Calvin cycle. It occurs in stomata. And stroma, NADPH and ATP molecules are rapidly being provided to the metabolic pathways in the stroma. Therefore, ATP and NADPH formed during the light dependent reaction are used in the stroma to fuel up the Calvin cycle reactions. The Calvin cycle consists of a series of reactions that reduce carbon dioxide to produce carbohydrate and glyceraldehyde phosphate which is the first stable substance of the cycle. Three main reactions happen in this cycle. One is carbon fixation, then the carbon reduction and the regeneration. Now we are going to learn more details about these. First, the carbon fixation. In this step, carbon dioxide is attached to ribulose one by bisophosphate resulting in six carbon molecules that splits into two, three carbon molecules. So in this site, we can see there is ribulose one bisophosphate, phosphate, carbon dioxide is coming and it fixed as, first it fixed in a uh, substance called keto acid, it's six carbon molecules and it breaks down to uh, two molecules of three carbon base substance that is three Phosphoglycerol to high. Phosphoglycerol, that's a, the first stable substance of this cycle. After that comes the point of reduction. This step is the sequence of reactions using electrons from NADPH and some of ATP to reduce carbon dioxide. This is the reduction step. ATP and NADPH is used to do the carbon reduction. Then the regeneration. In the final step, ribulose 1 by bisophosphate is regenerated. 
For every three turns of the cycle, five molecules of glyceraldehyde, three phosphate are used to reform three molecules of ribulose, one five bis phosphate. So here we can see that regeneration of uh, ribulose one five bis phosphate from three glyceraldehyde, three phosphate, and after some reaction, it regenerates ribulose one five bis phosphate. The remaining Glyceraldehyde 3 bisphosphate is then used to make glucose, fatty acids, or glycerols. It takes two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate to make one molecule of glucose phosphate. Thus, to make one molecule of glucose, Calvin cycle has run six times. These molecules can remove this phosphate and add fructose to form sucrose. The molecule plant used to transport carbohydrates throughout their system. Glucophosphate is also starting molecule for the synthesis of starch and cellulose. So here you can see the starting of glucose formation. First they get up to fructose and after that sucrose. So this is the total step of uh, our carbon cycle, the carbon re reaction reduction cycle of C3. So here we can see the pathway of Kelvin cycle. First ribulose one bisophosphate that is in stroma and carbon dioxide from the environment comes through the stomata and with the help of Rubisco enzyme it constitutes a substance called ketoacid. This is an unstable substance and it breaks down uh, quickly by the help of water and produce three phosphoglyceraldehyde. This is the first stable substance of this cycle, and the cycle is named by this stable uh, substance, and this is called C3 cycle. After that, three phosphoglyceric acid becomes to 13 bisophosphoglyceraldehyde. Here energy is used where NADPH2 is used for the energy and NADP release. After some reaction 13 bisophosphoglyceric acid becomes 3 phosphoglyceraldehyde. Here also ATP is used to give energy and after using the phosphate bond of that, it becomes to ADP. After that, consecutive reaction of the phosphoglyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone phosphate, some molecules and some substances are created. As we can see, the fructose one bis phosphate after reduction of the phosphate after uh, it constitute fructose bisophosphate one side and from fructose bisophosphate again ribulose 1,5 phosphate is synthesized and after that ribulose 1,5 phosphate release one phosphate bond and become ribulose 1-bisophosphate here also ATP has been used the source of energy and after using the inorganic phosphate bond it becomes to ATP. On the other hand and the ribulose one bisophosphate again used in continue to complete the cycle again and again. On the other hand the three phosphoglyceraldehyde and dihydroxine acetone phosphate also create fructose six phosphate that use to make carbohydrate by forming fructose and sucrose and lastly the carbohydrate production and the photosynthesis process is over. Here you can see the total process that chloroplast light energy coming, light reaction starts, NADPH and ATP is produced, oxygen is released on here and after that ATP and ADP starts the Kelvin cycle 
and carbon dioxide enters to stomata and after a group of reactions carbohydrate is produced now the hatch and slide pathway of carbon dioxide fixation the discovery of c4 cycle in monocore such as sugarcane maize and sagram has indicated that these plants have solved the problem of photorespiration the carbon dioxide is fixed in the mesophyll cells the initial product being a four carbon compound the process is called c4 pathway of carbon dioxide fixation c4 cycle so called because carbon dioxide is first incorporated into a four carbon compound that is oxaloacetic acid and c4 cycle is also known as hatch and slag cycle c4 cycle is more efficient than that of c3 cycle the third one of the carbon reduction pathway is crassulation acid metabolism or cam or cam crassulation acid metabolism is also known as cam synthesis this is a carbon fixation pathway that evolves in some plants as an adaptation of aerobic condition. In a plant using full cam, the stomata in the leaf remains shut during the day to reduce evapotranspiration, but open at night to collect carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide allowed to diffuse into the mesophyll cells. The carbon dioxide is stored as the four carbon acid, that is malic acid, in vacuoles at night. And then in the daytime, the mallet is transported to chloroplast, where it is converted back to carbon dioxide, which is then used during photosynthesis. The pre-collected carbon dioxide is concentrated around the enzyme, rubisco increasing photosynthetic efficiency. This mechanism of acid metabolism was first discovered in plant of the family. Presulacy, so it is called as Presulacean acid metabolism. So examples of subcamp plants are specific examples of camp plants are gel plant, calanchus, sedum, and Presulacy pineapple, Spanish moss, cactus, orchids, vagava, and wax plants. Families. Now we are going to enjoy. A video about today's topic. First, the photosynthesis reaction. Manufacture glucose, the building blocks of plants, is called photosynthesis. In the process, oxygen gas is produced as a byproduct. The energy for photosynthesis originates in the sun and arrives at the earth as sunlight. This light has both a wave and a particle nature. The particles, or photons, are the smallest units of light. Photons oscillate along a path which is measured as wavelengths. The light emitted from the sun contains photons in a wide spectrum of wavelengths, called the electromagnetic spectrum. Photosynthetic organisms use only a small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, called visible light. Photosynthetic organisms contain pigments that facilitate the capture of wavelengths of light in the visible light range. The color of the pigment comes from the wavelengths of light reflected. Plants appear green because they reflect yellow and green wavelengths of light. Red and blue wavelengths of light are absorbed by these pigments and provide the energy that is used for photosynthesis. Within eukaryotic photosynthetic organisms, also known as photoautotrophs, the chemical reactions of photosynthesis occur within plant cells in specialized structures known as chloroplasts. Photosynthesis consists of two sets of reactions, the light-dependent reactions and the Calvin cycle. Within the chloroplast are small disc-like structures called thylakoids, which are surrounded by a fluid-filled space called the stroma. The reactions that synthesize glucose, the Calvin cycle, occur in the stroma. The light-dependent reactions occur in the thylakoid. 
it is here that conversion of light energy to chemical energy is initiated. In most photosynthetic organisms, thylakoids contain pairs of photosystems, called photosystem 1 and photosystem 2, that work in tandem to produce the energy that will later be used in the stroma to manufacture sugars. The photosystems of the thylakoid consist of a network of accessory pigment molecules and chlorophyll, the molecules that absorb the photons of light. Within the pigment molecules, the absorbed light energy excites electrons to a higher state. Photosystems will channel the excitation energy gathered by the pigment molecules to a reaction center chlorophyll molecule, which will then pass the electrons to a series of proteins located on the thylakoid membrane. Photons of light strike photosystems 1 and 2 simultaneously. We will examine what happens with the photons striking photosystem 2 first. The energized electrons are passed from the reaction center of photosystem 2 to an electron transport chain. The electrons lost by photosystem 2 are replaced by a process called photolysis which involves the oxidation of a water molecule producing free electrons and oxygen gas. While this oxygen gas is a byproduct of photosynthesis, it is an important input to the cellular respiration pathways. As electrons pass through the electron transport chain, the energy from the electron is used to pump hydrogen ions from the stroma to the thylakoid, creating a concentration gradient. This gradient powers a protein called ATP synthase, which phosphorylates ADP to form ATP. The low-energy electrons leaving photosystem 2 are shuttled to photosystem 1. Within photosystem 1, low-energy electrons are re-energized and are passed through an electron transport chain where they are used to reduce the electron carrier NADP plus to NADPH. When the chloroplast is receiving a steady supply of photons, NADPH and ATP molecules are rapidly being provided to the metabolic pathways in the stroma. Therefore, the ATP and NADPH formed during the light-dependent reactions are used in the stroma to fuel the Calvin cycle reactions. The Calvin cycle consists of a series of reactions that reduce carbon dioxide to produce the carbohydrate glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. The cycle consists of three steps, the first of which is carbon fixation. In this step, carbon dioxide is attached to ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate, resulting in a 6-carbon molecule that splits into two 3-carbon molecules. The second step is a sequence of reactions using electrons from NADPH and some of the ATP to reduce carbon dioxide. In the final step, ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate is regenerated. For every three turns of the cycle, five molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate are used to reform three molecules of ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate. The remaining glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is then used to make glucose, fatty acids, or glycerol. It takes two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to make one molecule of glucose phosphate. Thus, the Calvin cycle has to run six times to produce one molecule of glucose. These molecules can remove their phosphate and add fructose to form sucrose, the molecule plants use to transport carbohydrates throughout their system. Glucose phosphate is also the starting molecule for the synthesis of starch and cellulose. Plants produce sugars to use as storage molecules and structural components for their own benefit. By utilizing the energy of the sun, along with inputs of water and carbon dioxide, plants act as glucose factories. 
photosynthetic organisms are the primary producers of glucose on the planet. They also produce oxygen gas as a byproduct. Hope that the video helped you to understand the photosynthesis process properly. Now it's time to homework. Our today's homework is write details about C3 cycle of light independent phase. Hope you all enjoyed the class properly. Thank you.